Uh, welcome. My name is Jared Trotter. I'm an application engineer here at Concepts in Production here in Amory, Mississippi. And today we're going to be looking at SOLIDWORKS Visualize Professional. Um, Visualize Professional is, of course, a rendering software that enables you to get high quality uh, images as well as animations for your different parts that you may want to put on display uh, for your customers or for someone else. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at that um, here today. And actually when it comes to Visualize Pro, uh, Visualize Standard is available for anyone who has a license of SolidWorks Professional. And that's just available in the installation manager after you go and install SolidWorks. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, Visualize and some of the added capabilities that Professional offers. So to kind of get started here, uh, let me just uh, bring up a model uh, that we have here. And this is going to kind of drive our discussion. Uh, here we have an espresso machine that's been modeled here in SolidWorks. And of course, if you're the engineer modeling something like this, you know its capabilities, you know um, how well it functions um, and so forth. Uh, but just looking at an image of this, if you were to get a screenshot or something, it doesn't really convey the message, I really want an espresso. I want this espresso machine. Um, and that's because of the image quality. And of course, there in SolidWorks, we have a few options, something like uh, real view graphics, maybe, uh, to kind of help us get a little bit better image. But uh, because SolidWorks isn't a rendering software, our capabilities are a little bit limited in that respect. So that's where the SolidWorks Visualize comes in. So I'll come over here to uh, SolidWorks Visualize here. And this is where I've already you know, brought in this model. Um, in terms of bringing in a model, it's a simple matter of uh, going File, Open, and then you can select your SolidWorks assembly from there, and then you'll just simply save it out as a project. Now, as you're looking in this interface, it's uh, somewhat similar uh, to SolidWorks in that we've got this uh, graphics area known as a viewport here in Visualize. And then as we come over to uh, these tabs, these are the tabs that I'm going to kind of walk you guys through throughout this webinar that really enables us to modify our image to our liking. So the first tab here is going to be our models tab and very similar to SolidWorks you'll see that if you expand that that we have what amounts to a feature tree and it's the exact same layout as this part is represented um, in SolidWorks. Now you have a few options there um, in terms of controlling how your uh, parts are displayed for instance, if you want to get some very similar parts that are kind of in the same orientation and group them together, uh, you can do that. And then that can be useful for um, animations and um, moving things as a group. There is also the option, uh, if you want to group appearances together, then you could actually uh, get both of those. Say, for instance, we want these two panels uh, to you know, update together we can get uh, both of them and we have the option uh, to merge the parts together. Uh, for this particular instance, I'll just do kind of a uh, control select. And uh, coming over here to the appearance, uh, let's look at some different options that we have. So uh, if we go to the particular color that's already associated with these two panels, it's this uh, satin finish here. And uh, then when we click on that color, then we can just uh, move this toggle kind of back and forth and you'll see there in the graphics area that it's updating in real time. Um, so this is going to be you know, rendered out and we have it set on fast right now so it gives us kind of a, a really uh, quick preview there. Now of course if you're uh, modeling something like this perhaps you're interested in multiple uh, configurations. You're probably used to that uh, working there in SolidWorks and Visualize is very much the same. So up here in our uh, viewport we can actually add a configuration. So here let's actually call uh, this one you know, orange for say and we'll get another one. Let's say we want to make it um, a green configuration something like that. So we can actually just uh, make a copy here I'll come down, you know, uh, to the bottom. And then these should be associated already. We'll go ahead and you know, pull those in. And then when we go to modify this color, uh, we'll see that 
it updates uh, dynamically so we can go ahead and change to a somewhat different color there maybe like a uh, darker green so then we have uh, that configuration saved and maybe we'll create one more maybe one that's a on the darker side so kind of a charcoal color and we'll go ahead and get uh, say something like this uh, smooth black finish perhaps uh, bring that to you know, both of those panels and maybe we make uh, a little bit of a, a modification there so now as we toggle through them we see that we've got um, our three different you know, configurations there pretty quickly uh, that we've generated and th these images by themselves uh, don't actually take that long to render out um, I rendered one of these uh, earlier um, in about uh, five minutes or so and uh, just kind of show you, you know what that looks like I'll come back over here to uh, my little PowerPoint here we'll see that we've got these images that are very uh, realistic uh, very you no know, lifelike to kind of draw that customer in and give them more of that um, emotional connection there with your product now it doesn't stop there we're kind of you know just kind of uh, getting the tip of the iceberg so to speak here uh, once you've you know, kind of changed the display of your different parts, you've set your colors the way that you want, uh, you kind of want to start to set the scene, as it were. And to do that, we'll come over to our Cameras tab. So here in our Cameras tab, we maybe want to get different views you know, of our camera. So uh, we'll go ahead and create another view here. We'll maybe call that uh, Basic or something of that nature. And as we start to look at our you no know, options in our camera, uh, what we'll see is that uh, we can control a few different things, one of which is our post-processing options. And this is one of the things that sets uh, Visualize apart from other rendering softwares because you don't have to um, have another uh, software in order to do things kind of in a post-processing nature. Uh, one of which is adding vignettes, which kind of adds um, a little bit um, of a halo effect uh, but what I'll do to you know, kind of show that a little bit more uh, dynamically is first bring in um, a scene or rather an environment um, so if we come over here to um, our libraries tab we have some different options here uh, for instance we can go to our environments and we can bring in what's going to be the reflection uh, here for our part so if we bring just one of these in, uh, say for instance this one is called uh, Chrome Studio, so that gives you, you know, a little bit uh, darker feel there. And then as we go uh, back to um, our cameras here, we can go ahead and enable our post processing, and then when we turn on those uh, vignettes, then we kind of get that a little bit of a halo effect, kind of just drawing more attention uh, to our part and kind of fading out there there on the side uh, so we have uh, that that one image that's set up and then maybe in addition to that we want to draw attention to uh, some specific part um, of our model here so we'll create another camera view and perhaps this will be the handle so the idea is that um, this handle here could be a new feature of this espresso machine so we'll come in just kind of zoom um, in on it and as I'm zooming up here um, one of the things that's worth noting is that in Visualize these options are the same as if you were working in SolidWorks so using your uh, middle mouse key to kind of you know, rotate rotate around and then using your control key to do a type of pan operation as well so zooming up here um, on the handle we've got our close-up view um, and perhaps we want to actually um, you know, highlight this particular handle so if we scroll down here in our camera options uh, what we'll see is the option depth of field so we can enable that and click on the the option to select the point to focus on we click that and then if we click on our little handle then that um, handle is actually going to be what's highlighted now 
so we have uh, that one and then everything else kind of you know fades um, to the to the background as it were and in a similar fashion uh, perhaps we want to you know, actually create uh, another uh, camera view and this one we want to highlight say for instance the drip tray so just kind of changing that focal point so now we're in the uh, drip tray camera view and we'll just re-enable uh, that depth of field uh, kind of you know, enabling that again and this time selecting the drip tray there so now the focus will be on the bottom there of that drip tray and then everything else kind of fades into the background so to kind of take a look at what that would look like we'll see we've got um, a fully rendered view kind of this up close uh, view with that uh, little halo effect uh, around there kind of really drawing attention to our product and then a fully rendered image of the close-up of that handle and then there um, of that drip tray all right so once you've got uh, the, those no images uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of um, move along looking at some other options uh, going back to you know, this default view uh, not only can you get um, you know change your displays uh, for your different cameras uh, you can also bring in your background so for instance a back plate you know, option is what it's called uh, that's available very quickly uh, just via a right click opening up a back plate and I'll bring in for this particular model uh, let's say we want to see how this would look in a kitchen environment so if we bring that in and maybe just position this in such a way um, just kind of you know, on this counter we can see how it would look um, in real time there and then of course we can um, change some of our options for our display um, changing the lighting uh, such that it's really conducive to this particular environment so coming over to our libraries tab we could choose any of these uh, that you no know, might seem appropriate and again that's kind of changing uh, the reflection options that we would have on our part uh, so whichever those you know, seem to be appropriate you can kind of adjust those and get it to be uh, just what you wanted it to be so come back over here to our basic tab and Let's see, perhaps we want to uh, turn this uh, back plate off now. And we'll just kind of uh, turn the uh, post processing um, off there. Coming here to our scenes. And yeah, we could you know, uh, turn those off. Now, another uh, nice option that's uh, really good for our app uh, for showing your part is going to be um, your animations. Uh, so the idea there is that um, you can actually show your parts moving in and out. Um, it's pretty quick, pretty easy to set up. We would just make sure that we got um, our part view and we want to get our object manipulation there we go ahead and uh, select our parts and just set a time frame uh, for this so the idea is that you know you first um, establish your keyframe so this is you know the starting uh, location and then as we move out we can grab these moving them kind of just out of our viewport and then when we scrub through we see if that's kind of the uh, the animation that we're gonna get uh, so we have that we we scrub through in that fashion and then um, in addition uh, to that perhaps we want to go ahead and um, add a keyframe for this particular camera view so then when we scrub through move those out the way maybe we're coming in and we want to zoom up you know, on our model there uh, then we can um, add another keyframe and now after we you know, scrub through again we can kind of see what we're going to get there so 
So just animating and bringing that in. And to give you a, a full view of what that would look like, in this case, without the uh, back port there. You'll see we can get this uh, nice rendering, you no know, zooming in on our model, really drawing attention to it, uh, really getting uh, the focal point of it. Now with all these different renders that you're creating, um, you do have the option there for your output under output tools. Uh, right now we're doing uh, just our, our basic renders and we can actually you know, do those uh, right on the spot or we can go ahead and send those to the queue. So we can line these up and if you're just doing these kind of at the end of the day um, and you want to do these you know, overnight or over lunch, uh, something like that, uh, you can send them to the queue and go ahead and output them like that. You also have the option um, here in Visualize Professional to do all cameras um, or all configurations. So you're getting all of those uh, views just kind of in one sweep. Now, in addition to uh, bringing out these static images or even these um, even these animations, uh, you can also do uh, the VR setting. VR is really good if you want to show your product um, kind of in an environment on a web page. For instance, if you want your um, audience to be able to uh, interact with the model, kind of rotate it around as if they actually are holding it in their hands. And the options down here um, kind of reflect how much they'll be able to rotate it. So the start and the end angle, for instance, showing how much they can rotate it um, in the end plane. And once you set those up, and I'll give you guys a kind of a preview of what that would look like here. And that would actually be output as an HTML. So I'll go over here to my HTML. This is actually uh, here just in Google Chrome. And I'll try to do this kind of slowly so you can guys can kind of see the effects here. So we have the ability to rotate completely you know, with our model. And we can even you know, rotate a little bit out of plane, get um, like a nice isometric view of what we're working with. And then that'll give the user um, a real up close and personal experience with the product. Now this is kind of uh, what happens when you're rotating um, on the outside of the model. Um, namely, you're trying to you know, look at it from the outside. Um, there's also the option to do a panoramic view. And those are there in the options and visualize uh, for your output. Um, and a good example of that is this Bombardier jet. Um, so with this um, Bombardier jet, this is kind of the interior of it. And this is also output as an HTML file. So once you're moving in here, you can actually uh, just kind of rotate in and around, giving you a full 360 degree view um, of the inside, in this case, of this um, jet. So whether you're looking to show the outside or the inside you know, of a particular model, uh, Solid, SolidWorks Visualize um, is there for you and it enables you to get a really up close and personal experience, really getting the end user to get um, like this personal connection uh, with the model there. So uh, just kind of in summary here, uh, we can go back over here to the PowerPoint. Uh, we've talked a lot about um, the different views that we can create, um, being able to focus in on a particular aspect of a model, uh, creating configurations, you know, showing the different um, you know, color schemes that you may want to show to a prospect, being able to use uh, that VR option to rotate in and around the model, and then of course that uh, panoramic view as well. So I hope that you all found this webinar to be informative. I hope you have a, a better idea of what Visualize is capable of, and I uh, hope you all you know, have a, a good rest of the day.